Now, the Syrian government says it will halt all military operations for Eid al-Adha holidays as part of a ceasefire brokered by the UN Arab League envoy Lokhtar Brahimi. For the Muslim holiday of Eid al-Adha, the general command of Syrian army and the armed forces declared truce on the Arabic Republic of Syrian soil from Friday morning, 26 of October, until Monday, the 29th. The government said, however, that it reserves the right to retaliate if it comes under insurgents' fire. The so-called Free Syrian Army had previously said it would abide by the ceasefire, but many are still doubtful, as in the past, the armed group did not respect a ceasefire negotiated by the former special envoy for Syria, Kofi Annan. Syria's truce announcement comes as fresh reports indicate that the U.S. is facilitating the flow of arms to terrorist groups active inside the country. Well, to discuss that story a bit further, I'm now joined from Washington by Mr. Webster Griffin Tarpley, who's an author and historian. Sir, thanks a lot for joining us. So firstly, I wanted to start off with your feelings on the prospects Thank of you. success for the ceasefire. Well, I think this, this ceasefire is simply impossible because uh, on the one hand, you have the Syrian government, and I think they could, they could observe a ceasefire if there were one. But on the rebel side, we've got upwards of 300 different death squads, 300 centers of initiative, 300 petty warlords. According to some accounts, they're grouped into three general groupings, but this is simply chaos. And uh, given the rivalries and even shootouts among these groups, if one group is observing the ceasefire, then certainly their rivals will want to show how radical they are by not observing the ceasefire. The other thing is that some of the larger uh, of these death squads would want to use this occasion to make uh, gains they otherwise couldn't, couldn't uh, get. Uh, here in Washington, the NATO propaganda line tonight is that the rebels have taken three neighborhoods in the city of Aleppo. I think we have to look at this with tremendous skepticism, but it does seem that they've been able to shoot a few artillery shells at Damascus, uh, again, taking advantage of the time right before the the ceasefire. So there is no political will by the rebels to observe a ceasefire. And uh, the backers, right, the Saudis, the Bahrainis, the Qatar and the Emirates, uh, they don't want their puppets to, uh, to lie around and, uh, and relax. They want them to get out there and, uh, and destabilize the country. So I think this is a dead letter from the word go. I want to pick up on your, on your mention of backers. Um, Russia has, of course, accused the United States of supplying arms to these insurgents. How do you assess that accusation and how, how valid it may be? Well, it's very good that General Makarov makes this point. When it comes from Moscow, it comes with a certain authority that, uh, that otherwise it wouldn't have. But, of course, we've been aware uh, for months that the U.S. has been uh, actively... Uh, shipping in weapons. They come in through the Incherlik NATO base in Turkey. We have U.S. Uh, CIA special forces and other officials on the ground near the border who act as traffic cops. They say it's to get it to the democratized uh, opposition forces. I don't think there are any of those. I think they give them to the most aggressive of the Al-Qaeda people who are, of course, operating in, in Syria. So the U.S. is now arming Al-Qaeda. Uh, in, in Syria, and uh, that, I think, is, is, is clear. So I welcome, we welcome the idea that the Russians have, have called international attention to it. Uh, maybe that should have consequences in the Security Council. Maybe there should be a resolution put in calling on the Western powers to stop fomenting civil war in Syria. All right, we'll have to leave it there for now, but we do appreciate your insight. That was Mr. Webster Griffin Tarpley, author and historian, speaking to us live from Washington.